to a variety of ways. I kind of got the wrong term. Did you have a question? I just didn't know if they were remedial. The, um, I don't think so. Uh, so. Somebody better able to discuss it. I, I, I thought no, the because the ones we were looking at for middle school weren't, but. Yeah, it's, I, I've got the impression they were. It is, Anne. It's, it's almost yeah. like your old traditional yeah. summer school, mm -hmm. where, you, where when you need some extra time mm -hmm. with something before you go on the next grade, you do it. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're offering. By grade level, specifically by grade level. Mm -hmm. But I think, I know that, uh, you know, if, if, if we really. Our thought was to try to tentatively do that. I mean, if in fact there were a real pool, uh, was a real pool of customers out there for that, I think Sue is quite capable of finding somebody. To this is just a starting point. Yeah, we, we were just really throwing this out here. Because she told me last fall when she and I started talking about this that she had tried to offer some academic capability. Now I remember the term capability team. Uh, but she said kids wouldn't sign up for it. That the parents kind of wanted it, but the kids were basically backpacking and. <coughs> whatever, canoeing and, and so on, and that I guess uh, the feeling was if you had to drag your kid kicking and screaming, you know, uh, maybe it wasn't. Well, I think there may be another reason, and that is that the kids and most of their parents probably don't think there's any problem. And I'll offer you a contrast. I went to uh, graduation at Boston University. Sorry, Wayne, it was <laughs> Boston University. We can easily get them in BU. And I <laughs> graduation, 400 young men and women graduated, and I was really pleased to see that only four or five of them graduated summa cum laude, and about 15 of them graduated magna cum laude, and about 50 graduated cum laude. The rest just graduated, including my nephew, who's going to be a clerk for a federal judge. Uh, obviously, these young men and women have been through a very rigorous program. <coughs> obviously, their grading system and their honor system was a very realistic one. But you look at our 6th, 7th, 8th grade, the honor rolls that came out the other day. It's really Lake Wobegon. All our kids are above average. 70, 75% of kids are on the honor roll. So why would kids who are on the honor roll, whose parents see them, uh, who are getting A's and B's, mostly A's, ever think they have to go to summer school? But what does it tell a student I'm, and I hear these calls from the parents at the high school <coughs> that they maintain a B average with no effort whatsoever. And I think these students think they are very, very bright. Mm -hmm. I can make B's. I don't study at all. And I, I don't think it's just a, a real... What can you do have. for us next year to give us A's that mean something? I don't want to get A's with twos and three in effort. You don't get an A with a two and three in effort. Hurrah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's done in this school system. What can you do to guarantee that that won't happen? That's the best first step you guys can take. I, I've been sort of bringing this up on a fairly regular basis on my three years in the school board, and I don't know the answer. I thought of rationing A's. You know, the teacher can only give five. What happened to bell curves? I'll give you an example. I, we took our daughter some years ago to a school uh, in New York City, and the headmaster sat down the uh, incoming students and their parents and said, in this school, a C represents good, solid achievement. A few will get Bs, a very few will get As, and if you don't believe it, we're going to send home the curve with every report card. And that's exactly what they did. There were 100 kids in the class, 50 or so, or 60 got Cs. And I can tell you, these kids got a heck of a lot higher SAT scores when they graduated from 12th grade than Cape Elizabeth kids do. And the vast majority of them had C averages. And the college admission offices knew that that particular school had a realistic grading system. How would that fly here in Cape Elizabeth? How would you pair uh, like that? Go for it. <coughs> I've heard people say, um, let our kids have the right to fail. I think the teachers need to have a right to fail our kids. Mm -hmm. I think if so, it's definitely. appropriate. Yeah. If, mm -hmm. if that's what we're going to do, then it has to be that way. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you, you just have I gotta, to be I gotta, I gotta tell you, I got to tell you all the story. No. no. Don't tell me. I thought my story was the last story. <laughs> <laughs> Chairman's prerogatives. The biology I story. One, I do have to go, but I just have one and It's comment. a story about what happens to a teacher who gives a low grade. Okay, I won't tell you the story, but it's... Like but Michael, I mean, teachers. the sixth grade, the sixth grade had 21, you know, straight A students, and then it dropped down to five I just, I just for the seventh to grade. You hear the flip side of what parents do to a teacher who gives a low grade. 
you got to hear the flip side of what you do to teachers. The culture will not support them. Well, I think that's up to the faculty to support them and the, the administration to support the teacher. What, parents, that's a, what that's do the parents do? To the, to, I've heard what the parents do to the police when their children are found mm -hmm. drinking underage. I hear they do a job to the police, some of them. So does that mean that the police are not allowed to do what they're supposed to do with those kids because the parents get upset? I've heard this. I think I that I, I, I think, think it's. Hear both sides. I think it's important. This is we. I've been talking about partnerships, you know, and you'll probably get sick of it. But that is a good example of why we have to work together because uh, teachers do have, get burnt and they do make um, they they make accommodations and that if it is a cultural expectation. Uh, certain things, and I we can't. I quarter pin tonight. We're not going to do more than scratch the surface of that one. But I do think it would be wise <coughs> for us to get back to that theme and to talk about how do we communicate, how do we get support? Because if we don't have that as a two-way understanding, it's going to it, it, it will not not work as well as it would if we were together. Well, we obviously have to have community. Uh, cohesion yes. on this view, yes, and, and if a teacher does give out a C, you know, the parent can't appear two days later with a lawyer saying, I'm going to sue you. Right. I mean, you can't have that true. mentality in this town That's if we're going to go that route. There, there are always going to be people in this town that are going to react that way, but what you need is enough consensus yes. among other segments of the community so that when that issue arises, we all stand together. Mm -hmm. School board, school administrators, interested and concerned parents, and we face it down. We can't let the system be dictated to by that kind of uh, okay. silliness. And you've got here the core of a bunch of concerned citizens who are ready to participate. You know, and, uh, I made a similar comment when we, <coughs> we had the last math workshop, that people in this town want their children to get good education. They want the inclusive school system to be the best. You know, not, not just the best here, but the best in the world. And we're prepared to contribute to that. Take advantage of it. We will. <laughs> here, may I just uh, plead that we don't get decoyed into a big insurrection over grading and lose, fact, lose sight of the fact that the content is really what we need to address. I can just see us going up another yet I, I certainly agree with the observation. And I, it has nothing to do with the class content in the curriculum. I, for one person, would like to see that be an absolute focus of the school system. The grading, I think, is a reflection of the expectations, to be sure, but it doesn't substitute for good and important content that has quality and appropriate quantity for it, to it. And I just can just see us now. Can almost write no. the script for it. And, Absolutely and I not. Think that's no. Nothing could be further from my mind. I mean, I went throughout my entire education to extremely demanding schools. I fought very hard for C's and was proud to get them sometimes. Uh, that certainly I don't have in mind just saying, hey, this kick school no, system's know, a cakewalk, we're going to change the grading system. Things get their yeah. own life. No. If the content is truly challenging yeah. enough, there really is no way a student could make constant A's and always. I'm saying, let's not put the yeah, cart before the horse. I, I mean, we've just done it so many times. We've just decoyed ourselves one subject after another, after another, after another. I would hope that we wouldn't do it again. I would agree. I think Angela has something. I, I'm really encouraged <coughs> by the kind of response I've heard tonight from the parents and from our leadership here. But the aspirations that we're talking about are really culture-based. And I don't think we represent the majority. I think we're really in a serious minority. And if we go forward, and extend beyond outcomes and assessment and talk about grading, elitism will be hurled at us because indeed it's all right and it's fair because our kids might be bright and they'll do well. And then we'll talk about motivation and we'll talk about de-escalating any good that's happening in the community. And if you look at what the children are doing today, and from where, where I sit, achievement primarily is a function and a direct correlate to parent support. And so as much as we're looking over and again, and what accountability is there in the school? How can we hold people accountable? And I keep hearing that. We're not sure yet what, what, what they're going to be accountable for. Is it the curriculum? Yes, it has to be. But how we measure that still is, is out there, that we need the guidance and judgment from the people who are studying it. 
so that we don't get caught again in the normal curve, because we're not the normal curve. And that really hurts kids. Just a, a couple of issues, and I don't, at you know, 10 of 10, I don't need to have these answered tonight, because maybe we could do it at the June board meeting. But in the middle school, we need your help with a couple of nuts and bolts issues. First of all, um, if we come to you with a proposal in our transition map, since we have the right of access in our system, and that's a board policy, um, what kind of support would we have from the board for having a, having standards in that class? And yes, you're welcome in, but you either meet the standards or you do not meet those standards as you progress through and at some time. And our schedule, we have our schedule set up so you can move to the other math class without disrupting your entire life. Um, if we can have your support in that. And also, we do have to talk to you about the sixth grade challenge program next year, because right now grade five has no formally identified people. In the middle school, we do not have the resources of time, personnel, or materials to service 84 children that have been serviced through that program this year. We don't have those kind of resources. Our committee in the middle school has a recommendation for you. It's more appropriate to do that at the June board meeting. We would like to do that, but we don't want incoming sixth grade students and parents to be surprised by something that may happen to them in September. I, I think we have to do this at a board meeting. Uh, you have to come to us with a recommendation. Uh, we can't make policy. No, I, I know we can't. I just wanted to be sure that that would be appropriate to have that on the June board meeting. Yep, well, put it down from 7.30 to midnight. <laughs> 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 oh, can I ask you one question? Sure. Am I to understand that the English program is 50 minutes next year? Uh, in the 8th grade. In the 8th grade. So we have gone from two 40-minute periods, which were 80 minutes, which actually turned out to be 70 minutes, two years ago. Last year, we had an 80-minute block. This, this current year is our 70-minute block. Okay, but last year, you could take writing lit and English, or writing lit and reading, or reading and English. So more often than not, there were two English programs that were available. For <coughs> the majority of students, not and, everyone. And, and last year, you were emphasizing this because of the great need to have more English time. And now, you're having less than you've ever had before. But one of the questions you asked last year, Loretta, was you asked if we do this 80-minute block, which without traveling time and all that turned out to be 70 minutes, um, would it impact and take time away from any other um, subject areas? Um, at that time, the response you were given was that no, it would not. And actually, the response should have been yes, it will. And it's because we cannot afford to take the time away from all our other subjects um, in order to give it to the language arts. A change we have from two years ago is that now practically all of our students are taking foreign language. And prior to this, foreign language was many times the second language art class that they took. Guys, everyone taking language in eighth grade? Practic we have um, five students that it's not appropriate for, but practically everyone is. So you're considering that really an extension of the Well, if we go back to that old formula of two years ago, we, we get that. But it is a reduction from what we came to you, and I was certainly one of the proponents for, for last year. Plus the academic periods are longer for math and science. Shall I say goodbye or shall you? Uh, <laughs> you <say> <laughs> Thank you for coming. This is, of course, only part of an ongoing failure. Wayne? Wayne? Good morning, Diane.